Thank you, Andrew, for joining us here today. And do you have control of the slides from there? Okay, yeah. Okay, so we'll open up the first presentation. This is going to be the fundamentals. Thank you very much. So, hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Lumsden Groom. Um, I am the Chief Economist at RTCT. Um, I, I and our company provide data to numerous financial institutions, including big banks, etc., etc. Uh, part of my team, we have a chief analyst and professor as myself. I've taught at the LSE, um, as well as Brown and Yale and Princeton and a couple of other places over the years. Um, so, I'm Need to be over here, really. Um, so, today we're going to look at why good traders never ignore bad news. Yes, it's a catchy title. Yes, it doesn't really mean anything. But as we move through this, we'll take a look at how your trading is dependent on the data that comes out in the markets. Now, there are different ways to look at how to deal with that. Some traders are purely technical. Others take some of this information. Others take it all. Um, RTCT is designed to provide you with the information you need in a structured way. Um, if you're a free member, you'll get enough to get you on your way. Um, so, let's take a look at the detail. So, major traded instruments. Pound, dollar, yen, euro, AUD, and CAD. Does everybody know what they are? Anybody here not trading up? Not traded, doesn't know what say the yen, the, the, the um, JPY is, the CAD. Um, no? Okay, brilliant. Uh, so, they are what we trade most. They make up the majority of retail trading in terms of forex, especially in spread, uh, in spread betting, because they're where the volume is, they're where the market is. They also make up the volume in most of the market as well. The reason they do that is because you are looking at six of the G10. You're looking at six of the most powerful countries on Earth, and certainly six of the richest countries on Earth. I know that many of you will want to talk about the Chinese Yuan, the Red Bai, or maybe about the Norwegian Krone, um, because of their massive oil fund. Um, but at the same time, that is, they are not primaries, they're not majors. And the reason they don't really make it to the majors pile is because there isn't enough volume. So this is what we tend to be looking at, these six. Um, throughout this presentation, do take a note of the color codes because they'll be all the way through the presentation and they're all the way through everything RTCT does. Um, so, primary traded currency pairs. Big list. Can anybody see anything that would scare them or anything that they wouldn't trade out of this list? Anybody at all? Anybody got anything out of this primary list that they, they haven't traded or would be interested in. I'm looking at the GBP and the D myself because I've never played with that. Um, some of these crosses are a little bit more unusual. Enza D CAD is an unusual one. Two commodity dollar currencies against each other. Really interesting, actually quite voluminous. Uh, and then from there, we've got the S&P 500, the Nikkei, the FTSE, the DAX, the uh, gold futures, and crude oil. Um, and that comes in two forms. Crude oil comes in Brent, um, which is light sweet crude, or rather extra light sweet crude, um, which comes out of the North Sea mainly, um, and WTI, which is West Texas intermediary, and it tends to be of a lower quality because it has more sulfur in it, apparently, according to my oil and gold analysts at least, um, which is why there's a price differential between the, di the two, because Brent is a higher quality oil that requires less refining comparative to WTI. Um, so, let's come on to the news then. And don't worry, I try and keep this as interesting as I can. Um, so, there are 300, on average, every month there are 306 releases a day. Now, oh, sorry, a month rather. Now, that comes down to 14 releases a day. 14 releases a day that affect your markets, affect what you're trading, and impact the volumes and the directions of markets. Yes, and it seems like a lot, and it seems like a lot to know. But, with so many currencies, commodities, and indices to choose from, economic events are a big thing. 
they are the primary driver. But if you look at the right market in the right place at the right time, that data can work in your favor. Or it can offer you an opportunity where it's not playing too big a part so you get another stable trade. But those trends you look at, those trends that every trader wants, the trends that the fantastic Ian Forster at the back is going to be speaking later, is going to talk you through. Those trends are caused by that data. In a currency pair, you have a primary and a, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember what it's actually called, a base and a, let's call it primary and secondary. Um, but you have the first half, so for example, in the pound dollar. Major and minor. Thank you. Major and minor. So you have your pound and then you have your dollar. That is two economies fighting it out day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. They are fighting it out in the market right in front of you. They are effectively at war with each other constantly. Every tick, every pip is a movement in favor of one currency or another. So in the pound US dollar, you're looking at, if it's rising, then you're looking at the pound winning and the dollar moving. Now, that is the fundamental issue in Forex trading. So if that's the case, knowing why that is happening is helpful. You can't ignore bad news because it will flip a market on its head. How many of you saw non-farm payrolls last month? <coughs> Anybody else? Okay. Can anybody remember the figure? Because it's 20. 20. 20. 20. 22. Are we saying we're going with 22? Do you know what the average for non-farm payrolls is? Anybody know the average? Yeah. There or thereabouts. So, we're in a situation whereby it was so far away from the average, it flipped the dollar on its head. If you're in that market and you don't know that's happening, you, don't, you are out, that's it. Because there's no alternative. If you know it's happening, like our traders do, then, well, in our case, we knew it was going to happen, we knew what it was going to look like, roughly, um, and we were able to actually trade with it and make quite a good day, I think. My traders didn't come in on Monday morning, so I'm guessing it was a good day. <laughs> um, but yes, so if you don't know it's there, it will affect your trading. Anybody who says technicals don't matter, I'm sorry, but they're lying. You can trade purely technicals, but even if you just take the economic data and pay attention to the high risk moments, that's all you've got to do. You don't have to take it all in, you don't have to process it, and if you do, we do our PCT does three briefings a day where our analysts will tell you exactly what's going on. Same briefings that major banks get, because it's all the same information, no matter who you are. But for retail traders, if you're not into fundamentals, all you've got to do is pull up an economics calendar. If you get the free one from RTCT, it'll even give you little colored warnings to tell you which ones you need to worry about. So my point is with non-farm payrolls, just be aware of the data. Be aware of those moments in the markets. Good traders don't ignore bad news, because where there's bad news or good news, there's money. And it's as simple as that. So let's come through. How can you lower your exposure? Well, I think I've just really covered this. Technical traders can see their risk parameters increase tenfold in heavy data weeks, back to that non-farm payrolls example. After all, if you don't know what's coming, then you can't plan for it. That's really what I'm trying to say. So, how do you plan for it? Just a little bit on how do you plan for it. Set up your pre-analysis. Our traders are at their desk at six o'clock in the morning. Somewhere there is a very, very tired head of desk somewhere around here um, in a tweed jacket. And you'll see him. He was up six o'clock this morning in my flat, ready to come here, and he was already at his screen when I got out of bed. Because if you're trading full time, that's what you've got to do. If you're trading part time, it's different. You pick your market out, you set when you want to trade, you find a place that fits for you. Make trading part of your life. If you own a dog, you know what time you're gonna take the dog out in an evening. Wouldn't you do the same with trading? Wouldn't you just say, right, okay, these are my trading hours. If there's an opportunity, I'll take it. If there isn't, then I'll wait. But by setting trading hours, you're not just going to the screen and going, right, okay, I'm at my desk, I'll have a look. 20 minutes later, you're not at your desk, it hits your stop, and you could have had four minutes instead of because it's about finding the time to do it well. And that's one of the biggest things that will reduce your risk. I mean, the PowerDesk platform is absolutely brilliant. 
but you've got to you've got to be at your desk to use it. No matter how good the broker provides the kit, if you can't if you're not at your desk to use it, then there's nothing there's no way to harness it. So this is a stereotypical day for our folks. Um, so then from there, UK Open, morning session. Everybody thinks the morning session opens at 8 o'clock. But it doesn't, because Germany opens an hour before. So you get a lovely hour of free trading, where markets start to set up their positions, and everybody starts to think about it. Bang, then the European Open, the London Open. Markets shift again, and they can change direction. But, effectively, that is one of the key voluminous moments. The end of the Asia session the beginning of the <coughs> London session. Then from there, we come through lunch at 11 o'clock. My staff get free food, so I can ensure they finish eating, eating before the US Open. Just makes sense. If you're planning your day and you're trading at certain times or in certain places, or even trading from your phone, because I think you've got a fantastic app, haven't you? Um, the thing is to find the time to check, is to find the time to fit it into your life. If you have a dog, and again I'll use the dog example, if you have a dog, you find the time to walk it. If you're a trader, you've got to find the time in your day, you've got a little running trade to check on it, make sure it's okay. Swing trading, for example, great if you haven't got so much time, but building it into your life will make you more profitable. Because that way you are controlling your risk. If you have all of this data playing out in the market, even if you're not looking at the data, you still need to be controlling your risk in your trades. So, from there, US open afternoon session. Particularly odd, actually, because this is wrong right now, because um, silly little things can take place. Like, for example, the US moved on to daylight savings times two weeks ago. So, instead of a release for the US happening at 13.30 UK time, it's happening at 12.30 until Monday. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Monday. So that changes when the data is released. So it changes when the risk happens in the market. So it's about controlling that. I'm not suggesting that you spend every hour pouring over every detail. That's what our analysts are for, even I don't do that. Um, the point is that it's about knowing what's going to affect you and your trade. So if you're in the dollar cab, looking at the dollar, looking at the cab, taking a quick look at WTI, because the cab and the WTI have a, a relationship to come through at the moment. Um, and then from there, general your trade management. Take a look. Actually understand. Get yourself an FX Blue, which is free. And there's some great software out there. I think, I think you can track your trade record through um, Finico as well. Get your nice list and work out which one works for you. Work out when your trading works. I have a trader who is 18. He's 18. He traded with us. He's making 20% a month on a million dollars. He only trades the American session. Only trades the American session. Because every time he tries to trade the London session, he's too, he's too tired. And he fails every single time. So our head of trading stopped him doing it. And his profitability tripled overnight. Now he's stable at 20%, including your broader. It's about fitting it again around your life, what works for you, your body clock. You can talk all you want about data, but you've got to build it into your life and find a way to make it work for you. That can be 15 minutes a day. It's not how much time. It's making sure it fits. Right, so from that, a visual representation. You'll see these two lines here at the top. The blue one is the yellow. The red one is the yellow. Those two lines represent the data provided all of the forecast data, so all of the economics calendars, all pushed down into two lines, effectively representing sentiment in a basket. So the, cup, the euro basket and the yen basket. Everybody know what the dollar basket is? Anybody not know what the dollar basket is? Okay, brilliant. And so the dollar basket is a trade weighted average of how much the dollar is truly worth against all other currencies. It lets you see what the dollar is worth. It lets you see the sentiment behind the dollar, where the market feels it is. What RTCT has done is build baskets for all the other major currencies. And again, you can get this free on RTCT. Um, the reason for
with that is we can watch the sentiment. And what this is, is a representation produced on a Sunday of what the data is likely to do in terms of sentiment to the market, to each basket. So the euro, blue, yen, red. And as you can see, we, we expected a movement and we got that. We got that. So yen falling down, euro rise. What do we get? And again, and again. And the, the way it works is that all of that data comes through and our modelling and our econometricians and analysts plot this all onto a nice big sort of graphy thing and it lets you see where the data is. So you don't have to learn all the detail. It's about just knowing what's going to affect you. So all you really care about is how is the economic data going to affect me on this day? And this is obviously a visual representation of that. Um, and what we have is it playing out in the market perfectly. That doesn't always happen. I'm not suggesting we know exactly what's going on. But our analysts are good, and they do work hard, and my team is good. Um, the whole point of this is to show you if each one of these data points is an event within the economics calendar, or several events, it's plotted out in a nice little line, and then you can see the comparative in the actual chart. These are real charts, and they're properly overlaid, and we can provide you with more if you, if you don't believe. <laughs> But yeah, effectively, the point is that the data does play out. Anybody that says technical lead is wrong, basically. You've got to know a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just what's going to affect you on your day, on your chosen period. Because, as you can see here, purple lines, the cap from earlier, um, expecting positive sentiment. Yen, expecting negative sentiment in this red line. What do we get? A nice rock. Okay, so, harnessing currency baskets. Is everybody with me so far, or have I lost you all? <laughs> any, any thoughts? I've lost you all, haven't I? <laughs> so, do you provide those overlays? Is that overlay or is that risk and um, we, we create something called the Risk and Sentiment Calibre, um, which is available through ITCT, and that effectively gives you that overlay on the right hand chart. How much more is that? Is that available in your clinical client? Um, uh, well, it's uh, available on their platform. Yeah. 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 But if you're a Finnico client, you can talk to us again. <laughs> 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 we'll give you an extra 30 days or something when you print it off. If you are not a Finnico client yet, become, you know, become one first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, harnessing currency <laughs> baskets. So I've just talked through the currency baskets. Does everybody follow me the idea of? a true value of a single currency. Because when you're, I can't take this off now, can I? Um, when, you're, um, when you're trading, you are trading one currency against another currency. So you are trading a currency pair. A currency basket is not just one pair. It's the lead currency, so in this case, this is the US dollar. Um, so this is the dollar basket. It's the lead currency, the dollar, against everything else that the US the United States of America trades with, and all the volume flow accounted for, and the math done to make it work. What they show you is true valuation. So how the sentiment is. So everybody with me so far? Bottom nods, yeah. I hope. Yeah. yeah brilliant. Um, so why does it matter? Well, the white line on here is gold. There is a counter-correlative relationship between gold and the US dollar. So immediately, we can look at gold in a different way. We can look at gold and say, right, okay, the dollar is dropping aggressively. I'll put down the thing. Um, the dollar is dropping aggressively. Uh, sorry, rising aggressively. Because gold is priced in dollars, the further the dollar falls, the lower the price of gold falls, until it reaches a point where effectively the buyers come in to revalue. Unlike indices, well actually the same as indices, counter correlated relationships because it's priced in the same thing. So because gold is priced in dollars, when gold rises, uh, sorry, when, when the US dollar falls, gold should rise, theoretically. Doesn't always work, and you can see that on the shorter term time frames, it does 
start to lose exact correlation, but it's very, very close. So if you're a swing trader, it's one of those correlations that allows you to look at the market in a different way. It allows you to look at the data in a different way. Gold is a safe haven. If it's rising, the dollar's probably falling. Works both ways, because on one side you have the pricing relationship, and on the other side, so on the dollar side, you've got the pricing relationship, and on the gold, gold side, you've got the safe haven relationship. So the two work together to, pr to create two markets that counter-correlate. That allows you to trade one or the other, or both, or hedge your positions. Um, how many of you have heard of hedging, position hedging? Yeah. Um, so, I didn't realize it did that, sorry, I'd have done that early. Um, so as you can see, it does counter-correlate. Even on a four hour, you can see the, the counter-relationship between the two. Then from there, hopefully you can see this one well. How many of you have heard of the carry trade? Okay, a little bit fewer, so I'll spend a couple of seconds on that, if nobody minds. Can somebody keep me to time, because I'm enjoying this. <laughs> um, I don't get to do this very often. <laughs> to keep me behind the desk, preferably chained to it if they could help. <laughs> um, so what we've got is the red line is the yen, the yen basket, and the orange line that I hope everybody can see is the AUD. Now, they track together, don't they? Not perfectly, but they track in the same direction. And the reason they track in the same direction is because of the carry trade. So, I'm going to go into interest rate differentials here, which gets a little complex, but I'll do it quickly if there's any questions. Um, so, basically, the Japanese economy has a very, very low interest rate. It's, it's very low. Um, it's minus 0.1, I think. Minus? Yeah. So, uh, if you borrow money, you will pay me. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Go in, in theory. But, the Australians, and the, the gentleman here is absolutely right. If you borrow money from them, in theory, they'll pay you. Um, but combine that with the Australian interest rate, which I'm hoping somebody at the back can tell me Australian interest rate right now. 2.5, 2.5, somewhere around 2.5. <laughs> that gives you a differentiation of 2.6. So if you buy in, if you buy yen to sell yen to buy dollars, you are getting a 2.6 return on the overnight. So you know all interest rates are are daily. So they are the day rate effectively. The, old, the Bank of England calls theirs the overnight rate. So, effectively, what you are doing is getting the difference between one and the other. And that's already stacked in your favour if you do it the right way round. You've then just got to make the technicals line up, and then you can, you can make money on both sides, theoretically. Technicals have to line up and stay lined up all night until you come back to your desk. In our case, we have a yen desk, so that's why. Um, but if, you, if you're up in the middle of the night or you're working nights, it's, it's a great different market to look at. Because they track together, it's unlikely, if the statistical likelihood of you coming out of carry trade worse off is, is reduced. It's not eradicated, but it is significantly reduced, as long as the technicals are in your favour. <coughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Or, so what's the time period? Do it in a single evening. Or, I'm going to spend a whole part of our reserve capital in the carry trade overnight. Um, it depends how you want to do it. You, you'll make a little bit in one evening, but then you've got the risk of it not going your way. The best way to do it, in my opinion, is to effectively use a swing position. But then it's got to be technically perfect, because otherwise you've got risk in market, and that's individual traders. Next up, the cat, uh, sorry, um, yeah, that is the, the cat, good. Um, I was wondering why that, that code is wrong, but it's the white chart. Um, so the purple line is the cat, the white line is WTI, West Texas Intermediary US Oil. The point of this is that you can see on the longer term time frames, there is a significant correlation. Now, obviously, this spike here was actually an OPEC event. So again, if you're trading oil, you need to be aware of OPEC, for example. Not saying you need